Hey, welcome back to Player Profiles and Spotlights. We're doing the college players that are coming into the NFL this year. Uh, today is the day we're doing Baker Mayfield, like you heard. Uh, he is out of Oklahoma and Texas Tech for one year. Uh, walk on. Yeah, walk on at both schools. And usually when you transfer schools, you kind of transfer down or sideways. He kind of transferred up, basically, like from Texas Tech to Oklahoma and became one of the most prolific quarterbacks in Oklahoma history. Um, some say the best in Oklahoma history. Jesus. Uh, it's crazy. I know. I'm serious. Those aren't my <laughs> words. Uh, Sounds like it. He's about six. Well, who did he beat out? Sam Bradford? Yeah. And, uh, Sam Bradford was, was really good. Landry Jones. Sam Bradford was awesome in college. What are you talking about? So we're talking about Baker Mayfield. Uh, 220 is about 22. He's a fifth-year senior. He's 22, but by the time the NFL season starts, he'll be 23, which is kind of old for uh, a quarterback. I, just, I like no, that because of experience. Not necessarily for quarterbacks. A lot of, like the Rosens and everyone else, are 21. I know, but... Darnold's 20. But Yes, okay, but if you look on this end of the scale, yeah, but when you look on the other end of the scale, what age quarterbacks play? Oh, yeah. Play to. He's, not that, he's not that old. No, I, I like he's it. Had I like the experience. Yeah, exactly. More experience, a little more chance plus, to kind of grow Plus, he has head. played at Texas Tech and Oklahoma, which means that he's played for different head coaches, different coordinators, different playbooks, different personnel, for sure. Uh, and he was able to be successful in both of them, so I actually like that as well. It means he can kind of thrust him in there, and he can adapt to the playbook and uh, everyone around him and make him better. I, I think there's a lot to like about this guy. I mean, I know that you know, Travis, and I, I, you and I kind of agree on this, and I think that maybe there's other people that have different opinions. I think James Closet kind of agrees with us on this one. I think yeah, he's I just think he's that, coming around to Baker. I think that of any guys coming out of the NFL draft, I'm sorry, the rookie draft today, I think he's the most polarizing. You have, yes. if you love him, people are comparing him to Drew Brees. If you don't like him, people are comparing him to who? Johnny Manziel. So it's kind of like, it, either way, both guys have talent. Uh, obviously, he's more towards Drew Brees. If you look at his stats, if you look at his highlight tape, if you look at all the stuff that like makes him who he is, it's more towards Drew Brees than it is Johnny Manziel, and that's just what it is. It's just the attitude part of it that people are saying it reminds him of Johnny Manziel. He's kind of shorter quarterback. He kind of scrambles a little bit like Johnny Manziel, but as far as accuracy goes, arm strength goes, and actual just talent, it, he's in head and shoulders above Johnny Manziel where he was when he came out. I His agree. mobility, too, is, is up there. Is For like, sure. Like, uh, he, a lot of people say he has happy feet, which you kind of talked about as a negative, and yet he can't get happy feet. But he has mobility, so he can escape. He doesn't get sacked a lot, and he can actually run when he has to run. Well, <laughs> he runs to make throws is kind of what I like, yeah. Like, I, the, the whole choppy footwork thing does kind of worry me, but that can always be fixed. It's more of like the reading. As long as you can read the defense and you can read where the routes are going and you have the arm strength and you have the accuracy, those are things you can't really teach. The footwork is, is teachable. It's, you know what I mean? It's not like well, that's uh, what I think he comes in with a good, a good guy that has a quarterback coach that's, a good, that's good with footwork and you can fix him. If he's already doing what he's doing now with where he's at with his footwork, then he can only go up, in my opinion. Uh, it's not going to get worse by changing his footwork. Like The arm strength and the accuracy is always going to be there. I think it's kind of uh, the system because he was For sure. a shotgun in Oklahoma, mm -hmm. very pass heavy. So he's going to come into the NFL. He's going to have to do some under center. He's going to have to, like, happy feet in the pocket uh, coming from under center is a little worrisome, uh, I guess. Like you said, though, I'm not worried about it that I wouldn't take him in my rookie draft or I don't think teams in the NFL are going to take him in the first round. Uh, but there's an adjustment that's probably going to have to be made. If you go to the right system and then you somehow – Clearly, he's excelled, and that's the type of offense he kind of goes to. That's that's definitely a, a, a point the arrow upward for rookie draft reasons for me. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Could you see him going in the top five of the NFL draft? Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Which, but to who you think? I mean, any of them, but like the Giants, I don't see taking. I don't think the Giants him. will. But so I you have the Browns for to, two, and I you have the Colts and Browns. I can see him going to the Browns. I can see him going to the Broncos. And I can see him going to the Jets. So the Broncos are what? Five. Okay. And All the right. Jets are six. So I know that's not the top five, but I see one yeah. of the, one of those teams. Uh, possibly. Uh, I hope he doesn't go to the Jets. If he goes to Denver, he could be. He, he's definitely to be the starter right away. I kind of, I kind of, he. I don't feel like Rosen's going to go to the Browns at one. I feel like the Browns are going quarterback at one. Darnold probably. Um, and I've heard Darnold and. Um, Dude, if they I take him, if they take Mayfield. That sucks for him too. I, I don't think so. I think I think that's a good landing spot for him is is Cleveland with kind of the change in structure kind of that's going on there. They do already have talent. They already had a decent uh, offensive line. They could still use picks to bolster 
some of those positions as well. I think they need a guy to come in who is going to have uh, higher character. I think he does, even though there's the stuff of you know <clears throat> him right. being arrested in that tape and these comparisons to Johnny Manziel. I think when you dig deeper and you dig past like those the clickbait stuff. He has a higher character. He's a guy that gets the rest of his team involved. He's a guy that is to me, talking to coaches every play at the Senior Bowl. To me, it's not so much the character. It's more um, he's got leadership, and that's and that's what Cleveland kind of though. needs. He needs a, they need the leadership there. They need somebody to come in and step in and be a leader. Uh, Cleveland, in my opinion, is not that far. The last couple of drafts they've done, they've done really well. I think they did really well last year's draft. I know that everyone says that Kaiser was a miss, but they only gave Kaiser a year. And so if Kaiser is the guy, if they draft a quarterback number one and Kaiser's the guy that he's either the bridge or he's the guy that's the backup, I think he'll be just fine there. I don't see them getting rid of Kaiser for any reason. The running back is another issue in Cleveland. So he, they will need a running back. They've already let Crowell basically test the free agency market. Correct. I saw today that they're bringing in Chris Ivory for a, for a tryout, basically. They're, they're, they're talking to Chris Ivory, mm-hmm. who got cut from Jacksonville. So obviously that's something that needs to be talked about, but their wide receiving core is pretty pretty solid in my opinion. As long as Josh Gordon can stay out of trouble, I think that if Baker Mayfield walks into Cleveland, he's got a pretty good start. Yeah, I agree. I think their no defense, where is, he goes, he, he their defense is good. Yeah, it's not great, but it's good. Uh, the problem is is that he's going to be facing in his division. If he does go to Cleveland, he's going to be facing three really good defenses. Like if Pittsburgh got a good defense. He's got Baltimore Ravens always have a good defense, and Cincinnati's got a decent defense. So it's going to be tough for him. That's six games out of his 16 if he did. That's always been the case for Cleveland. Right, and that's why all these Cleveland quarterbacks that they draft always struggle because those six games they usually struggle on. Yeah, and they don't give them a damn chance. Well, and this is the thing. I've heard a good comparison. I heard uh, listening to some podcasts uh, this week, and one good comparison was – uh, Philip Rivers, as far as he's fiery and he's he's mm-hmm. a kind of raw raw competitor, mm-hmm. and he can get on other players and kind of you know kind of piss people off. But at the end of the day, they respect him because he's a competitor and he's a winner, and he's he's the type of guy that I think character wise, when things do go wrong, can shoulder like mm-hmm. okay this it's on me it's my fault I'm the quarterback I'm the gunslinger kind of like Eli Manning. I heard somebody else say the same thing. Eli Manning's always done that. Like if they bring like a Josh Rosen or somebody like that who already has character concerns is he going to be like a more like ryan leaf where like hey it's like he just gives up it's not my fault it's me 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 yeah the guys didn't block for me or this that but i think that he would shoulder the the uh other criticism i think he really would i think he's the guy that he's a he's a player's player he's he's a locker room guy and that's where i think he's going to excel is because of that because he's had to he had to walk on at both both universities he went to, so you can't come in. He's had to prove. Pre- all he's had to do is prove himself. Pre- yeah, exactly. He was never like a highly touted guy coming out of high school. It was uh, earned. Basically, everything that he did and where he went, all the awards that he got. I mean, you went through the list of them before we start recording. Uh, the list goes on and on and all the stuff he's won from the Heisman Trophy, Maxwell Award, Walter Camp Award, Dave, uh, Davey O'Brien Award, Associated Press Player of the Year, two-time winner trophies at all over the place for everything. Two team, a two-time first team All American, three-time first team All Big Twelve. Um, the few things I uh, or the few things, the, a lot of things I do like about him. One being his hand size. We've talked about before. Um, hand size in a quarterback. When a guy's only six foot, six foot one ish, uh, they tend to have smaller hands. He's got nine and a half inch hands, which is actually uh, compared to like guy that's like six foot four, six foot five. So he's got big hands, um, which means that he's not going to fumble the ball. He's not going to have a lot of turnovers, the strip sacks, and everything. Uh, he always protect the ball well in college as well. Uh, his pre-snap reads of the defense is next level good. They're saying it's NFL ready right now is they wait to see what the defense is going. He does the whole uh, come up like he's going to hike the ball quick, uh, get the defense, you know, jump in to see where everything's going and just reads the defense very well pre-snap and while uh, the ball's hiked. Uh, he's, he's also uh, good as well. The only thing was his footwork was a little choppy. We already mentioned that. But the one big plus that was I couldn't get over, so I started kind of diving into it deep, was his accuracy. Uh, his accuracy... Uh, he had, with all these accuracies, uh, percentages I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you a stat after it, and it's ridiculous if it even still is that good. Uh, he was in the top five, his clear window accuracy. So when he had a clear window to his wide receiver, he completed 82% of his passes, which is ridiculous. Through a tight window, which is two foot by two foot window, is how they measure it. Through a tight window, he still made 41% of the passes. So that's how accurate he is with pressure in a tight window. He still almost completed 50% of his passes. No pressure on him, he completed 77% of his passes, which is more than any NFL quarterback's done. 
Uh, under pressure, 65%. So he's under pressure, scrambling around, and still made 65% of his passes. And then with the stat of he had one of the top three highest drop rates of his wide receivers of all quarterbacks in this class, a 5.16% drop rate, meaning that the number's going to be even better. The numbers should have been even better. If he had better receivers to throw to, all those percentages I just gave you, the 82%, 77%, 65% are jacked up even more. So you imagine this guy with a clear window, he's 82%, and they don't drop those balls, he could be 84 85%. That's absurd how accurate that is. And if the guys were able to catch it, go up and make catches, and maybe have like sure-handed guys, because who's the best Oklahoma receiver that's coming out? They're tight. Exactly. So, yeah, Mark Andrews. Yeah. That's it. But his wide receivers aren't that great, and he's putting up these numbers. The kid must be, you know, onto something here. So that mm-hmm. might help with the Cleveland, Cleveland I mean, Browns. Over his career, he's had some good receivers. I mean, Dino over his career. Right, was right. There last year. Correct. So, um, he was there with Mixon, who's obviously a running back, but he, but he, you know, he can catch as well. So he's, he's had good players around him. Uh, but this is for this last season. Right. So his, uh, to touch on that completion percentage kind of uh, angle, uh, or his accuracy, uh, in 2015, when he was with Texas Tech, he was number four in the NCAA uh, for pass completion percentage at 68.1. Years uh, 2016 and 2017, he was number one in NCAA. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, he's clearly accurate. Yeah, there's a lot to love about this kid. I, I really do like like his prospects. The only thing for me is not so much the negativity, uh, negativity <laughs> off the field or any of that stuff that's going off the field. It's more just his height. That's the only thing I'm really worried about is his height. You don't see a lot of short quarterbacks, like and short being six foot tall. That that see, I have listed, you have six, I have listed at six one, and it says that he was also measured at six two before. Uh, at the Senior Bowl, he was just measured six, one, just under six one, I think. Okay, so six something. So six that's I mean, so I guess it's not, not like bad. he's five ten or you know five nine or like Doug Flutie or you know something like that. But six one, I mean, it's not horrible. Uh, is three me, inches really that? Give me a second. I actually I actually have it. So go some ahead. comparables? No, no, no. His actual measure at the Senior Bowl. Well, he's gonna get measured again at the combine. He is. I mean, the only real thing that he's had uh, off the field. February 25th, 2017, he was arrested on pu- uh, for public intoxication uh, and trying to flee. Uh, that's where he got tackled and got uh, speared into the wall. He took the hit like a champ. Uh, it was very impressive. Did you, you, listen, did you listen to the video? On yeah, that? I listened to everything. It was great. With the sound he made when mm-hmm. he, got, he got tackled into like a retaining wall. Yeah, and, but he, got, <laughs> he, he was fine uh, afterwards. <laughs> Uh, and then, uh, again, he had court April 7th for the public intoxication charge. He pleaded not guilty. June 15th, the University of Oklahoma ordered Mayfield to undergo 35 hours of community service uh, with completing an alcohol educational program, which he did. So, I mean, just that one time. And, and he's, he's college in college. Kid. Yeah. College kid that got drunk and he's walking around yeah. campus. Like, hey, man, it, if you were tipsy enough, you're not quite all there and coherent so maybe like he saw people running up and was just like uh and it flashes no, through your head no that wasn't how it went but listen it flashes <laughs> through your head like okay I'm the quarterback on whatever team I can't be getting in trouble so your first drunk instinct might be to I'm gonna try and outrun Ooh, no, these, he might even like, like, these guys I'm a football player I'm fast like I, can, I think I can outrun these guys he didn't even get he only feet because you know why because he didn't take off like he took like two giant yeah. steps if you watch the video you know what I'm talking about he took like two kind of big steps and then started, and the police were on it. They knew he, what he was doing. He should have done the uh, Johnny Manziel spin move at least. Like he just got absolutely clobbered. It was it was ridiculous. Like he didn't even get his speed going. Like yeah. he was tackled. Like the police saw it coming from a mile away. They're like, this kid's gonna this kid's gonna try to. He's like in the open field. You couldn't touch me. <laughs> <laughs> he was missing his cleats. I just to touch on character and stuff like that. And we talk about him kind of being high character. <laughs> If you're going to get in trouble, and, you know, college kids, like, you get in trouble when you're that age. So I got in trouble when I was that age doing a few different stupid things. Mm. So if you're going to get in trouble... Talk about it. What'd you do? No. Uh, <laughs> it's not the super serious type of trouble. Like, this wasn't super serious. He wasn't driving a car and drinking. He wasn't, you know... True. Domestic violence or doing anything crazy like that or having weapons or anything like that. So, I mean... Yeah, he was drunk in public. That's it what I mean. Was, it was well publicized and... Because sometimes, of who he was. Sometimes that's all you need to give you a wake-up call. To be like, I had to earn everything I got. And it can be kind of really besmirched and taken away by one, word. one bad decision. Thank mm. you. I like that word. Thank you, sir. <laughs> uh, I, so, yeah. There's a Baker Mayfield rule. 
Which is NCAA, NCAA requires the players transferring between four-year institutions forego competing for a year following a transfer. After Mayfield transferred from Texas Tech to Oklahoma after his freshman year, he filed an appeal to the NCAA to allow him to be eligible immediately Oklahoma on the basis that he was a walk-on and non-scholarship player at Texas Tech. So because he said, they're not giving me a scholarship, I'm going to try to walk on. He did, walked on, and uh, ended up taking over the job. He didn't have to sit out that year. I like that. Savvy. It's Baker a lot, makes a lot of confidence too. Like, look, I, I, I'm, I'm this good. I know I can come in and compete. So when you cut, there's, I think ESPN or somebody did, uh, or NFL Network, somebody did something on Baker Mayfield's kind of story, and like he enrolled at Oklahoma, and it was like, and, he, and it's him talking, saying he's like, I was like a regular student for like two weeks, and he literally walked into like a team luncheon or something, and walked up to the coach, uh, got some balls, obviously, walked up to the coach, and was basically Stoops. like, I want to play for you. Yeah, I'm, you know. Let me do what I got to do. I want to play for you. I want to walk on. I want to try out. Whatever it is. Uh, and whatever he did or the charisma or whatever it is that he has, he got that shot and he never looked back. I mean, that says a lot to me as far as uh, more than just athletic ability. He's proven it on the field, but he's also mm. been able to do the things to get in the <clears throat> position to succeed. Which I definitely didn't read enough. He actually did. He was forced. It says officials from Oklahoma asked Texas Tech officials to authorize Mayfield's immediate eligibility, but Texas Tech officials objected and declined their request before granting a release in 2014. Mayfield was forced to sit out the 2014 season while also losing one year of eligibility, uh, as was required by the rules. On uh, June 1st of 2016, the Big 12 faculty athletic representative voted against a rule proposal that would have allowed the walk-on players to transfer within the conference and not lose a year of eligibility. The next day, the rule proposal was amended uh, to allow walk-on players without a written scholarship offer from the school they were transferring from to transfer within the conference. So he actually got the rule changed. He did have to sit out the year, but now, as of 2017, uh, he is now that is eligible. If you transfer over as a walk on, you don't have to sit out the year. So you can thank Baker Mayfield for that for all future. Uh, so players. you fought that battle for right. everybody else. Pretty much. And it cost him a year, but it worked. They gave him an extra year of uh, eligibility, so that's why he is 23 years old going into the league, not 22. But look at the accuracy. I'm looking at his numbers 2016, 40 touchdowns, 8 interceptions. And you're like, wow, that's, that's awesome. And then the very next year, 41 touchdowns. So he throws another touchdowns and three less interceptions with five. 41 TDs, five interceptions, over 4,000 yards. Man, I mean, kids got it. I just, like you said, I'm not really concerned about the height thing. Uh, I guess I'm just concerned about the off-field stuff, and it's really not that much when you actually look into it. I, I have a feeling that in the NFL draft, I have a feeling that somebody is going to trade up. Mm -hmm. to Because I don't think Mayfield will be the first quarterback taken, nor will he be the second. I can and see him being the second or third. Before. I just have a feeling that Darnold, I have a feeling that Darnold is going to go. I, I don't know why I have him, but I have a feeling that Darnold's going to go. And then Rosen? And then Rosen. That's what I think, too. And then I if think it's is. up in the air between Mayfield and uh, 